doing things that you will say, this is my part, Lord, in your creation. Like you and like me. Look at your seatmate. Do you know whoever your seatmate is, there is an improvement on that by that person? If that person became uglier, that's also that person's fault. <laughs> For example, if that person become, excuse me, without offense, that person became overweight, no offense, it's not God's fault. Are you with me? Hello? If that person has all false teeth, it's not God's fault. It's how you take care of the teeth while you were growing. Are you with me? Look at your seatmate. Smile, smile to your seatmate. Whatever you do, God said, dress it. He gave us an, a wonderful creation. 100 trillion cells. But God said, keep it. Keep it. He did not say destroy it. He said, dress it. Dress it. That's why now we are dressed. Look at however you are dressed, that's your choice. Look at your seatmate from head to foot. Are you proud of what you wear? Then, that's what you made. It's not God's fault. Whatever you're wearing right now. Amen. That's how you dress yourself. Give God the best love of praise. Somebody shout, hallelujah. And God said and commanded man saying, Of every tree of the garden, thou shalt mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt die. Ladies and gentlemen, even, oh before that, before that, let me go back to dress it and keep it. God wants us to honor Him in every fruits that we able to produce. We need to bring to God, next slide, bring to God the first fruit. Bringing the first fruit. For children, every first child born out of the parents must be dedicated to the Lord and let God use that person. No other plan, no other dream, but God's plan. First fruits, especially a son, first child, must be dedicated to the Lord. That was the practice until today, especially of the Jewish people. Those are the verses. Now, bringing the tenth of everything, Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. God wants, the well, man, while man is dressing it, he needs to keep it, meaning continue producing and continue making the best of this. How can he do it? By honoring God. Bringing the first fruit, all of it, first harvest, bring it to the Lord. Then the following month or the following day or following harvest, just tenth of everything. That is how God wants man to be responsible in all God's creation. But what happened? Man wants to take it all. Look at your seatmate. Say to your seatmate, we took it all. So what happened to us? The world and the creation of God did not produce any more sufficient blessing to us. That's why today, there are many famine, many poverties, many shortage, and many things. Why? Because man annihilated himself, annihilated himself, separated himself from his creator, thinking by his own he can survive, but we cannot. It's only in teleserie that you will survive. <laughs> but in reality, without God, we will die. Can I hear? Amen. It says, God said, thou shalt not eat the fruit of it. Listen to this. God decide what is allowed. And what is not? When man challenged it, he challenged God. And the consequence is lethal. That all men have died and all men have sinned and died because of sin. What happened? Look at Pastor Bong. Because God is almighty, all-powerful. He don't need to explain why he's saying you should not. He is God. Remember that. When we started to challenge it and pretend to become so intellectual and intelligent, we question His authority, we are the loser. This is what happened in the garden. The tempter, Lucifer, in the form of a snake, or possessing the snake, should I say, challenged the Word of God through Eve. And then, death came into humanity. Why? Because they doubted God by doubting His command. My brothers and sisters, this is happening in many people today. The Bible is so simple. 
yet we were making it too complicated and too difficult to understand. When God said, give, just give. No more many definition, explanation, when, how, where, how much, uh, dollars, Philippine money, what? He just said, give. As simple as that. Are you with me? When he said, forgive. There's no explanation or justification. Forgive. How can I forgive? I am the one that is being accused. Should I forgive? He said, forgive. Are you with me? He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And many of us said, why? He don't need to explain. He is all powerful. Amen. Give God the best clap of praise. That's where man's failure enter in. That's why, why many are in misery because we are putting a question on who this God is and His authority. When we learn to recognize who we are, we are just created. And He is the creator. When we recognize that and we learn to submit to Him, then everything in us will be a blessing. He said in Deuteronomy chapter 30 or 29, 30, he said, I call heaven and earth to be a witness against you today. I call heaven and earth. I want you to, I set before you life and death, blessing and curse, but I want you to choose life. As far as creation of all things, it's all in the hand of the powerful God. Bring it back, please. But on how man able to manage it depends on how man allow God to be involved in his handling of life and all that was entrusted to him. How much you allow God in your life is how much you will become successful and fruitful in your life. If you're giving to him only tenth of your life, then tenth of your life will be blessed. If you were allowing him to interfere or to lead you in 50% of your life, then you will be 50-50. Sad to say, look at Pastor Bong, many people only come to God at the end or when they are on their deathbed. When the doctor said, it's impossible for you to be healed. When the doctor said, I'm giving you only two months. We said, oh Lord, Lord, have mercy. It is in His sovereign will if He wants to heal. If not, it's also to Him. Look at Pastor Bong. It's not actually a question of life and death or blessing. It's not about this, this blessing in this life but it is living for Him and dying for Him. That's the issue of life. That's the issue of life. It's not, oh, oh, God gave me extension of life. That's not the important thing. The important thing is when you live or when you die, you know you live according to God's will and purpose. Because if not, you are just a disturbance in the beautiful creation of the living God. Are you still with me? Listen to this. Number two, after the creation, let's go to day-to-day -day action. Thou showest loving kindness unto thousand. God is showing His loving kindness. Remember, this is the Almighty God, the all-powerful God. He is showing kindness. Look at your seatmate. Say to your seatmate, He is showing kindness. Look at me. Whatever you receive in your day-to-day -day life, it is just God's show of kindness. In Tagalog, kinaaawaan ka lang ng Diyos. Walang dapat ipagyabang. Amen? You cannot bow saying, you know, discard lang yan, discard. Ang discard? Discard lang yan. No, it's not. It's all the show of God's loving kindness. Look, uh, look at Acts chapter 17, verse 27. And that they should, St. Paul said, that they should seek the Lord if happily they might feel after Him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. Verse 28, For in him we live and move and have our being. In him we live and move and have our being. In him we live and move and have our being. Every day is just God's show of kindness. Pastor, how about the people who die? Is there no kindness of God? There might be, we don't know. But the point is this, whether we live or die every day is a show of God's kindness. Are you with me? In our day-to-day, -day, daily kinds of life, look at the following slide. We live as He let us, we die when He calls us. The idea is that not that we become careless, but rather careful for the life given. 
for any time, He can decide to take back what is given to us to exist, we call life. Anytime. He can call back this borrowed life. Anytime. Remember the parable of the rich man. Luke chapter 12, 16 to 20. You will find it there. I think I posted it there. The story goes like this. There was a certain rich man who became so rich. More rich. Why? Because his earnings became double. He said, like in our generation, he said, Oh la la, I have lots of income. Now this is what I do. I will open another bank account. Because one account is not enough, I will go again to another account. And what I will do, I will just drink, be merry, and be happy. But verse 16 to verse 20, look at what the Word of God said. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? Kanino mapupunta yan? Sa akin. It will be taken by others. So what's the point? The when we live, do what is right before Him. So that when we die, we will not be afraid to face Him. Are you with me? While we are alive, do what pleases Him. So that when we die, we are pleased to see Him. We are not going to hide. Because all of us will stand before Him. Remember, this life is not really the life. This is just a choosing time, a place to decide where you are going to spend eternity. So it's not a question of how long you live. It's a question of what kind of life you have spent here. So that when you face God for eternity, you will know your destiny. Do you know you already know where you are going after this life? Many people don't like to talk about that. He said, you are not sure. You can be sure. You want me to let you know you are sure? Oh, it's so easy. John chapter 3, verse 36. Open your Bible. John chapter 3, verse 36. It says, Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever has not the Son has no life in him, but the wrath of God abides in him. Sa Tagalog, ang sino mang na ng anak ay may buhay. Ang sino mang walang, wala sa kanyang anak ng Diyos ay walang buhay. Ang sumpa ng Diyos ang nananatili sa kanya. So simple. If a person live this life and die without Christ, he can never be in heaven. Never be in heaven. Never be in heaven. If you are in Christ Jesus, even if in this world you did not become famous, you did not become rich, you did not drive a beautiful car, if you die or when you die, you will wake up in the heavens of the living God where there is no more tears, no sorrow, no poverty, no death. Because in this world you have Christ Jesus, in eternity you will have the fullness of Christ. Give Him the praise. Somebody shout, Hallelujah! Listen, next slide. We move as He allow us. There must be a recognition that whatever we are able to become or achieve or acquire is all because of Him. Bible said, it's not by might nor by power of man, but by the Spirit of the living God. Look at Pastor Bong. It does not mean you, the Holy Spirit will just possess you. and the... No. It means the ability, the wisdom, the capacity to become significant, to become intelligent, to become able to invent, to become to able to be successful in everything that you do. It's not because just by your mere finite knowledge and wisdom, but it is the infinite wisdom of God that among the many people, He chooses you. Are you with me? There are many people until today are struggling to find what you have. Maybe some of you are not even dreaming to be in Canada. But in the wisdom of God among all the people, some of you might not be dreaming to be here. But why are you here? The all-powerful God decides you to be here. Now, to maximize and become the best of you, who, where you are, is now your choosing. You will not say to God, you brought me here to be just like this. Don't blame him. You become like that because you do that to yourself. Are you with me? In your marriage life, for example, if this if did not become healthy, don't blame God. Don't say, Lord, you gave me this woman. See? He destroyed my life. No, 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 no. 
you allow that woman to be in your life, you can make the best or the worst of that life. Are you with me? Same with the woman. You allow that man to enter your life and you are you discover that that man, oh la la. You cannot come to God and you say, Lord, are you punishing me? You can still make the best or worst of that man. Now it's your choosing. God, by His sovereign will, among many people who are praying to have a husband, it was you who was given that man. In Tagalog, yan ang bagay sa iyo. Now what you just need to do, make the best of it, give God the best love of praise, somebody shout, hallelujah. Pastor, does it mean that if I am not married, married, God has no plan for me? No. He has the same plan. He has the same purpose which is to please God. Are you with me? Whether single or married, it's all the ability to make the best of opportunity that we have. Are you with me? Look at your seatmate. Say to your seatmate, God give us an equal opportunity to make the best of it. Amen. Give God the best clap of praise. I'm almost done. Listen, have our being. First one, in Him we live and move. Now have our being. The being, this being, the life itself, the purpose, the value of this life. Again, it's because of Him. Man in his capacity to live is because of the Almighty has allowed Him. Third John 2 says, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper, be in health as thy soul prospered. That Full, fullness of humanity, spirit, soul, and body. It's all because of God. Are you with me? So it means God created all these things. And in His creation, He gave us the accountability and responsibility to make the best of it. Now, in the day-to-day -day basis, not everyone is given the same length, but when you are alive for today, we have all the same 24 hours to spend. In Him we live and move and have our being. Some of us will be happier in the night according to our choosing on the day. Are you with me? Now, let me go back to what I mentioned a while ago. If you choose the bad thing, the sovereign God will come to manage the damage you are planning to do. Are you with me? For example, you're planning to destroy 100 cars. You can only make three. Destroy three. Why? Because God will manage because there are other people to whom God has a plan that you cannot touch them by your evil plan. Are you with me? This is God's wisdom that are mind-blowing. We cannot comprehend it like in many people today. You are listening to me. It's not my choosing. But when I know He chose me, I, may, I must make the best of preparing my lesson or my sermon. I will not say to God, you choose me, then you give me. I will stand here unprepared. Oh, it's up to you. No, that's pride. That's arrogance. I will be accountable to Him. Listen. And the very God of peace shall sanctify you wholly and pray that your God, that your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord God Almighty. Look at 2 Timothy 3.9. The Almighty God demonstrates His loving kindness to thousand generations through His faithful provision and careful management of all what man has brought to himself in spite of God's warning, God's law, and God's patience in him. In spite of all the bad things we are bringing, in spite of knowing God's perfect will, God still manages our day-to-day -day lives so that we will not destroy totally ourselves. Can you imagine God's mighty power? We are a self-destructing creation since we fall into sin. But God manages the self-damage we are planning to do. That's why until today, we find hope in spite of all our failure because God in His all-powerful power, His wisdom comes in when our frailties and limitations take rule. Give God the best clap of praise. Hallelujah. That's why He called mighty intervention. The Bible said the verse that we read, great in counsel, mighty in work. Signs and wonders and miracles are the soul making of God. Listen, God's provision for man to experience His power and love 
Forgiveness of sin. Look at your seatmate. Say to your seatmate, God already forgiven all your sin. You just need to come to Him so that you will be cleansed. Do you know that? It is only us who limit ourselves to experience that peace. We are already forgiven. Next, deliverance from the power of darkness. Look at your seatmate. Say to your seatmate, there is power of darkness. Sabihin mo sa Tagalog, may demonyo talaga. Amen. But the Lord delivered you from that. Are you with me? Amen. Sabihin mo sa katabi mo, pero talo na yon. Next one, poverty. Poverty, God delivered us from there. Calamities. All the calamities in life, God makes sure that it's being controlled. Most of the times we complain, like what happened in, in Haiyan, in the Philippines. Around 10,000 people died. Do you know that in the mercy of God, He controlled that it's the minimum? Philippines should have been eradicated in the world because it's the first, the most powerful cyclone or typhoon that had passed through the creation of God. What is 10,000 in the sight of God? Every person of that are special to God. All of them are known to God. Did He select them to die? He allowed it, them to die, but not, it's not His perfect will. But He needs to allow these things to pass by so that all the people, the remaining 7 billion people plus will remember we are not in control of this nature. God is. Therefore, we need to manage this nature as much as we can without destroying it. I just talked to one of the brothers talking about climate change. What we have right now is man's making. God is just controlling the damage. According to one scientific study, this world will end by 2025. No one will be living. But God is the final one who will say that. He manages and allows a preservation of generation to continue according to His plan and purpose. Amen? Give God the best clap of praise. <laughs> sorrow and pain in our soul, all the sorrows and all the pain that you suffer are all managed by God. He put it to what you can. Some of you might have lost your loved ones, two loved ones probably, some have lost three, four, some probably lost none. But the same pain in all of you are still wounding our heart. Are you with me? Because it's not what you lost. It's what you can. He allowed things according to what He placed upon the capacity of what you have. Same thing in the blessing. Are you with me? Same thing in the blessing. If whatever you have today is that the capacity that you can manage. Are you with me? Without insulting anyone. It just go like this. If you're now driving a brand new car, because God see you can manage a brand new car. If you are driving a car that when it starts, it, it's hard to start because God see you can manage that. Are you with me? Hello? Nothing to complain. He is the one that sees things. Oh, you're asking for a brand new car? No, no, no. It's not for you. This one is for you. Are you with me? Lord, why me? Because you can. Hello, look at your seatmate. Say to your seatmate, whatever trouble you have, say, come on. It's because you can. Amen. Give God the best clap of praise. Somebody shout, hallelujah. Come on, give him the best clap of praise. Let me go on. God provided Christ as an answer for it all. The compact, the compact answer for the provision of God is not a thing, it's a person in Christ Jesus. So ladies and gentlemen, the creation of God was, we are all amazed. And we can only understand it if we understand Christ or if we come to Christ. Our day-to-day -day existence, God's provision, God's protection, God's blessing are all possible when you recognize the begotten Son of God. The Creator become the created so that the created can come to the Creator and experience the almighty power of God manifesting in His daily lives. Give God the best clap of praise. Let us all arise, please. Hallelujah. Yes, the best clap of praise to Him. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him. Just for lack of time, just for lack of time, wherever you are right now, I would like you to believe that He who can see all things can manifest Himself upon you. Do you know? Do you know that God gave you an authority to move Him? Tagalugin ko po. Alam ba ninyong binigyan kayo ng Diyos ng karapatan at kapangyarihang pakilusin siya? 
He can make you, He can, he, you can make God move in your life. And it's called prayer. So today, let's call upon Him. Who created all things, let Him move in our lives. For in Him we live and move and have our being. Even those who are watching by live stream, you can allow Him who is the Almighty to move upon your life. In His word, call unto me. I will answer thee. Show thee great and mighty things that thou knowest not. Jeremiah wrote that. The same person to whom the foundation of our exhortation was today. Lift up your hands. Let us be amazed on Him. Oh God, You are Lord of heaven. Oh, You are, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are Lord. You are Lord of creations, the universe, the earth is the Lord, and the fullness thereof that includes you and me. One more time, sing it with all your heart. You are Lord of heaven, recognize Him, and as you sing this song, believe you will be healed. Believe He can save you. Believe He can deliver you from power of darkness. Believe He can interfere, intervene in your lives to make it better from worse. Amen. The universe, the earth is the Lord, and the fullness thereof. Your mercy. Proclaim it to Him and let's approach His throne of grace, Your mercy. Your mercy is without end. Your power is without measure. Your holiness establishes Your throne. Your mercy, Pro proclaim it, believe it. Your mercy is without measure. Your power is without Your measure. the keyboard just to play i want every hand lifted up to him even those who are watching by live stream now it's your time to call upon him call upon him if he is able to create all these things that even beyond the ability of man to comprehend in the fullness of it can he not create something for you that you need it is will and it is plan that your day-to-day -day existence will be under His provisions and His blessing. He knows all the cells that are running in your body. He feels whatever you have in your soul. He knows all those things. Because He is the creator of all things. He understands every situation in life. He gives us the key to move Him. And it's called prayer. Wherever you are right now, call upon Him. I give you this time to think, to contemplate, and to call upon Him. Remember, we, He gave us a responsibility. Whatever you become is your choosing. He gave you and made you to the most potential possibility you are and you can. But for that to happen, we must recognize Him, calling upon Him. Asking him for his grace and mercy, as the Bible said, he showed his loving kindness to a thousand. Let you be part of those to whom he will show his kindness. Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son Jesus, look at your people whose hands are lifted up. I pray that you reach out to them and bless them. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a touch of the Holy Ghost upon your life. I sense it. In the name of Jesus, touching you right now with the peace of God that passes all understanding, 
giving you an assurance you will be able to overcome all your troubles and all your trials. You just need to decide right according to His will and plan. And His grace and mercy, mercy shall abound upon you. Yes, those who have any sick body, place the part one of your hands in your body and let's believe God's healing touch for He is not limited by distance neither by time. In the name of Jesus Christ whom the Bible said He showeth signs, wonders, and various miracles. Right now, let your healing be part of God's wonders upon your life. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus. Let every broken cells, cancerous cells right now be removed from your body and let God recreate a fresh, healthy one in you. Receive the touch of healing upon yourselves in Jesus' name. Declare it upon your life. Say, Lord, thank you. I receive. I receive. I receive my healing. And I pray for those who have any financial crisis, you want God to make miracle upon you. Receive your blessing in the name of Jesus. Be blessed, my brothers and sisters. Be blessed. Us and you shall receive. And I pray for any families, for any marriage lives, for any marriage people, for the singles, for the seniors, for the man and the young, for the man and young men, for the children. In Jesus' name, let he who is all powerful manifest his loving kindness upon you and make the best of how and what he can make of you. And may you discern his wisdom, may you discern his will, and may you live in the center of God's perfect will. Today, I declare that the all powerful God shall bless you exceedingly and abundantly and unto him all the glory and all the honor come on give him the praise somebody shout hallelujah, hallelujah. before we sing a song say to your seatmate i choose to be blessed I choose by to be the blessed. almighty god amen praise the lord we won't stop declaring his name in this place and in our lives 